My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 203 in the series of basic math. Today we'll have our fourth video in the series of 15 on the topic of Venn diagram. And today we'll learn the difference between the concept of something being double counted and something being triple counted. When we're dealing with Venn diagram, we have to understand the notion when we end up double counting something or when we end up triple counting something. And today we'll, put the, we'll deal with the, these two notions side by side in, in a nice injector position so that we can compare the two, the difference between the two and how to, how to uh, detect how to detect exactly how many people, how many things, how many objects are being double counted or triple counted. Let's start with something very simple, a, a, a scenario where we end up double counting. Double counting is what we typically encounter because it's a simpler scenario. Here's what's going on. So we're going to have 10 students. We're going to have 10 students. We're given, we're given, the, we're told, we're the group of 10 students. That's not going to change. We know that there are 10 students total. In this group of 10 students, we are told that six of them is three, six of them is three, French. And we are further told that eight of eight of the students out of this ten is thirty German. But if you add up the two figures, if you add up the two figures, we get fourteen. If we add up the two figures, you can clearly see that we are getting fourteen. But of course, we already know there are ten people actually. There are only ten people in the group. So actual number of people, ten is the actual number of people. There is no doubt about that. There is no doubt about it. There is no uncertainty about it because that's what we are told. We are told that in a group of 10 students, six of them tell us that they study French and eight of those 10 students tell us that they also, they not, I, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't have used the word also, eight of them also tell us that they study German. Do you understand? The language is very important. I did not, I did not mean to say also. Okay, let's start again. So we, we went to this group of 10 students and we simply asked them, do you study French? Six of them said yes. We asked the second question to the same ten, 10 people, do you study German? Not do you also study German? No, we did not say that, you understand? Do you study German? That's all. And eight of them said yes, we study German. But we end up, we end up these two figures, we get 14. We, we end up 14, we only have 10 people. Where is these other four coming from? Where is this overflow of 10? This overflow of uh, this overflow of four, are they not ten? This overflow of four, because we have when we add up six and eight, we get fourteen. There are only ten people altogether in the group. This overflow of four tells us that four people, four people. This tells us that four people must have been must have been. Double counted. How are they double counted? How are they double counted? Here's what's going on. So here's a group of people. Out of these 10 people, when we asked them, do you study French? Six of them said, yes, we study French. Six of them said, we study French. Now, mind you, mind you that these four people that we have there, the, uh, this overflow of four people is going to play a major role here as to how this comes about. We'll see that in a second. Then we go to, then we ask the text question to the same 10 people, do you study German? And 8 of them said, you study German. 8 plus 6 is 14, we have an overflow of 4. That 4 tells us that these people are double counted. How are they double counted? They are double counted because these 4 people are, are out of these 6 people who, when, they, when asked, do you study French, they said yes. So they counted first as a group of people who study French. And then the same exact four people reappear in this group when we ask the second question, do you study German? Not do you also study German. That's not what we are asking. Do you study German? End of the story. These ten people, out of those ten people, eight people says, yes, we, we study German. Out of those eight people who said, yes, we study German, four of them are double counted. Four of them are the ones who belong to the group who said that, yes, we study French. The same exact four people appear here who said that we study German. In other words, these four people are double counted because they study French as well as German. So therefore they counted once as the people who study French and then the same four people are counted one more time 
when we count the people who study German. They appear in the common area. They appear in the common area. As soon as we put four in the common area, which, which represents the people who study French as well as German, as soon as we put a four here, we have to go back and adjust this figure. Out of these eight people, four of them study only German. Four study only German. Out of the six people, we take up a four, and now we are left with two. Two study only the French. And four of them study both languages. Now we are all set. Now it makes sense. Four plus four is eight. Eight plus two is ten. And ten exactly what we had here. Now we're going to do the example of triple counting and you'll see that this overflow that we see there at the end is a little bit tricky to understand. It's not difficult, but in the beginning it requires some thinking. It requires, it requires some thought process because we cannot simply transfer. Here it was very easy. Whatever you see here, here in the, in, in the notion of double counting is very easy. Whatever you see here ends up in the middle area. When you do triple counting is very different. So let's, let's start with something very simple, very straightforward scenario. Instead of, instead of 10 people, instead of 10 people, we'll have three students. We will have, instead of 10 students, we will have 3 students. So we have this group of 3 students, it's a new story, you understand? It's a brand new story. Forget about our story, it's a new story. So we have a group of 3 students, we ask this group, do you study French? Out of those 3 people, 3 of them said, yes, we do, we study French. We ask the second question to the same group, do you study German? And out of those 3 people, in a group of 3 people, 3 of them say, yes, we study German. We ask the third question to the same group of three people, do you study Spanish? And the three people out of those three people said, yes, we speak Spanish, uh, we study Spanish. As you can see, when we add up these three figures, we get a nine. We get a nine. But the actual number of people we have is three. We know that three is the actual, three is the actual number of people. We have an overflow of six. What does this overflow of 6 represent? Just like here we had an overflow of 4, just like here we had an overflow of 4, here we have an overflow of 6. What does that represent? Because of the fact that we're looking at three different scenarios, three different characteristics, French, German and Spanish, let's put it here, French, German and Spanish, this is, this no longer we are talking, we are no longer dealing with double counting, because here we only had two characteristics, French and German, here we have German, French and Spanish. This would, this will come into play when we look at the number of people who are triple counted. Let's take a look at it, let's take a look at it in terms of Venn diagram, shall we? And you will understand. So here is our French, here is our German, here is our Spanish, French, German and Spanish. Three people said they study French, three people said they study German, three people said that they study Spanish. The question is, why, does, why is there an overflow of six? What does the six tell us? That six, just like here. Here it was very simple. One more time. Here it's very simple. Whatever you see here appears here. Here, this six tells us, listen carefully, this six tells us that three people, three people are being counted as nine people. We're counting the same three people three times. These three people are first counted as three people who are studying French. Then the exact same three people are counted one more time who study German. And the exact same three people are counted third time around, triple counting, when we study number of, when we count the number of people who speak Spanish. And at, at the nine, we only have three people, three actual people. The overflow of six tells us that the actual number of people who are being triple counted is three. We don't, we don't simply put down six here. The actual number of people who are being triple counted is three. Three people, listen one more time, three people, listen very, very carefully, three people are being counted as nine, three people are being counted as nine, and therefore nine minus three is an overflow of six. These three people, these are exact same three people because that's all we have in the group. These are the exact same three people. Out of, this three, out of the group of three people, when we ask them, do you study French? All three of them said, yes, we study French. Out of the group of three people, when we ask them, do you study German? All three of them said, yes, we study German. Out of the group of these three people, when we ask them, do you speak Spanish? All three of them said, yes, we speak Spanish. They counted as nine people. Three people, one more time. Three people are being counted as nine people. Therefore, there's an overflow of six. We take the half of that amount and put it in a common area here. Why half of that amount? Because this is... This is 6 here, 6 plus 3 will be the total amount 9 that appears because 3 are counted as 9, 3 are counted as 9 and therefore we have an overflow of 6. How do we actually represent that? As soon as we put a 3 here, then we have to go back and adjust all of these figures. So 3 becomes 0, this 3 becomes 0, this 3 becomes 0. In other words, in other words, 
Out of the group of these three students, there is nobody who studies only the French. Out of the group of these three people, there is no one who studies only the French, or only the German. And out of the group of these three people, there is nobody who studies only the Spanish. Everybody studies all three languages. Do you understand? Now let's look at one more scenario, which is going to be a little bit more complicated. Instead of three students, we're going to have seven students. We'll deal with seven students. Okay? And see now if you can figure out how to, how to deal with the notion of triple counting. So, we ask seven people, we have a group of seven people, we go to them and we ask them three questions. Do you study French? Two of them said, yes, 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 yes we study French. We go to the seven, same seven people, we ask them a second question, do you study German? Three of them said, yes, we study German. And then we ask the third question to these seven people, do you study Spanish? And then four of them said, do you study Spanish? It's very nice of them, that is two, three, four. You see? Anyway, so when we add them up, we get two plus three is five, five plus, uh, five plus four is nine. Nine is what, what we add up with, but we know that the actual number of people is only seven. We have an overflow of 2. What do you suppose this overflow of 2 will represent? This overflow of 2 represents the fact that one person is being counted as 3 people. One person is being counted as 3 people. Let's see, let's see in the diagram, shall we? So how many study French? Two of them study French, we are told. How many study German? We are told three of them study German. How many study Spanish? We are told four of them study Spanish. When we add them up, two plus three is five, five plus four is nine, we only have seven people, which is why we have an overflow of two. That overflow of two tells us that one person, one person is counted, is being counted three times. One person is being triple counted, and if you count, look, look at my fingers, if you count one person, you only have one person, but you count him as three, this one person is being counted as one, two, three, well, you're going to have discrepancy of two. You're going to have an overflow of two because it's one person, but you're counting them as three. Do you understand? If you were double counting, if you count one person, if you, if you double count, then one person will appear as two. And therefore, they match. Whatever you have overflow is the same number, it's, it's the number that's being counted, a double counted. If you have an overflow of one, which means one person is being double counted, one person is being double counted, and that's it, it matches one and one. You see here, four is overflow, four is double counted. But in a triple counting, it's a little bit different. In the triple counting, if there's an overflow of if there's an overflow of two, if there's an overflow of two, that tells must tells me that I had one person whom I counted as one, two, and three. I triple counted him. And then so I have a leftover of two. And once we understand that part, once we understand that notion, the rest will be very simple. So we'll see them in a second. As soon as we put a one here, we have to subtract one from here, only one person studies French. As soon as we put a one here, we have to subtract one from three, only two. Two people study only German. Two people study only German. That's how I should have said it. Not only one person studies French. That's not what I meant to say. Language is very important. Even though it's, it's basically amounts to the same thing, but the emphasis is not on the fact that it's only one person. The emphasis is on the fact that one person studies only the French and nothing else. Two people study only German and nothing else. And this four becomes three. And three people study only the Spanish. And there is one person there is one person who studies all three languages. All three languages. And now the figure will add up. You will see in a second. Now the figure will add up. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. And 6 plus 1 is 7. Which is exactly what we have. And that is the essence. That is the nub. That is the gist. That, of, that is the central idea of the notion of triple counting as opposed to double counting. Unless you grasp this concept, unless you master this concept so that you don't end up making careless mistakes when, when you're dealing with a Venn diagram, you'll have a very tough time if you're dealing with the situations where we're dealing with three characteristics. My intention right now, I had originally when I, when I uh, started the video, was to actually do another problem, which I will not do right now because I don't want to, make it, I don't want to get carried away. We'll do this triple counting tomorrow also. We'll do a simple problem where we'll illustrate the concept of simple counting or triple counting. Uh, and we'll do a couple of more ones. But right now I'm going to stop because otherwise the video will become too long. Make sure you watch the tomorrow's video, day number five. Or if this is four, this should have been four also. This, it should have said two, 204, not 203. Today is our day number.
204. This is our fourth lesson in the series of 15. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.